Hi, this is the first of two short video tutorials that will show you how to put an image on a brick wall in a completely non-destructive fashion so at the end you have live type and live pictures. This is the document with the painting on it. As you can see we have a number of type layers. Some of these layers have um, various effects on them, some of them don't. At the bottom behind all of those you have just the picture that's taken from a Dover book and behind that you have the brick wall. This particular wall is one that I made in Filter Forge because I wanted to have a wall where the mortar color and the brick color were fairly similar so I could show you that you don't need to have a large difference in those colors in order to use this technique. Um, it will work better if you do, of course, and you can also do this with a photograph of a wall, but you don't have to have either one. You can just do it like this. So, um, this picture, of course, looks like it's floating here because it is. We need to have the illusion of having it painted on the bricks, and we're going to do that by putting some brick shadows on it. And to do that, we're going to have to isolate the bricks, and we're going to do that by isolating the mortar. So first we're going to hide all of these layers by dragging on the visibility icon. You don't have to click, you can just drag. Then we're going to zoom in some on the bricks. And now we're going to be using the select color range, and for that to work the best, First you get the eyedropper, and you select the color that you want to be selected. So we're going to click someplace in the mortar, that puts the mortar color in the foreground swatch, and then go up to Select, Color Range, which opens this dialog. Now the way I have it set up right now, selected pixels are white, unselected pixels are black, and partially selected pixels are gray. You can change the way that looks down here in this um, little menu at the bottom here. But grayscale is going to work much better for what we have in mind here. The fuzziness slider up here enables you to make the pixels either selected or not selected, or you can have them partially selected. So we're going to have a fairly low fuzziness, we'll put it about 18. And now with the eyedropper here on the left selected, if you hold down the shift key, you can select more color to put in it. And if you hold down the option key, that's Alt on a PC, you can select fewer. So you can select and unselect colors this way. Um, you can drag to select or you can click on them. What we're trying to do is get as much of the mortar as we can possibly get and get as little of the brick as we can. So we're just going to go back and forth between them. We don't have a lot of time, so we're not going to spend a lot on it. But um, just select and not select until we have something that looks fairly good. So we're going to call that good enough because like I said, we don't have a lot of time. Click OK, and now we have a selection. I'm going to make a new layer above the brick wall, and I'm going to tap the D key so that we have the default black and white again. Tap the X to switch the black and the white, and hold down Option key, that's Alt on a PC, and Backspace to fill it with a foreground color. Drop that, and now we have toothpaste in all of our bricks. How beautiful is that? Now if we wanted to, if we have some bricks here that are just way too selected, or some mortar that's not selected enough, you can also go back and tweak this by adding a mask um, and selecting some bricks. We'll just select a couple of them here. And filling that with black on the mask layer, I'm going to um, fill it by using the Option Alt key again. If you have some mortar that you don't have enough of, remember there's nothing there, so in order to select that, we're going to have to select the actual mortar rows themselves, um, just the way you would ordinarily select stuff. And then with the layer selected, not the mask, the layer, we'll fill that with white so that we can select that if we wanted to. You could go back and retouch this a lot. I don't think that's really necessary, and so this will all match. I'm going to undo that so that it looks about the same as all the rest of it. Now I'm going to show all of these layers. And now we just drag this layer behind the brick wall so that I have this pristine layer that I can work with later if I ever need to go back to it. I've got it, but it's not showing in the image so I don't have to worry about it. So I'm going to hold down Option, that's Alt on a PC, and drag a copy of that to the top of the layer stack. I'm going to right click on the layer thumbnail and choose Apply Layer Mask from the menu here. And now the layer masking that we made is actually part of the image, it's no longer a mask. And then I'm going to go up here to filter and blur that just a little bit with the blur more so that it kind of knocks the edge off of it and it's sort of like cheap fake anti-aliasing. Now as you can see we have toothpaste where we don't actually want it, so what I'm going to do to fix that 
is hold down the command key, that's control on a PC, and click on the actual painting itself to select that and then I'm going to make a new mask. Since I have a selection, it will mask out anything that is not within that selection. So now we just have the toothpaste where we want it, and we're ready to do the magic. So we're going to go to the, make sure the, the layer is selected, go to the FX and choose Inner Shadow. That will open this dialog box. Now we're trying to match the shadow to what's already there on the other bricks. So we're going to change that light angle to about 90. Make sure global light is checked. I'm going to reduce the distance to one or two pixels and I'm going to change the size so that that's only a couple of pixels as well. And that looks pretty close to what we've got in, in the rest of it. So click OK. And now we have the shaded toothpaste, which isn't what we wanted. So to fix that, we go over here to Fill, not Opacity, Fill, and we reduce the fill to nothing. And that takes all of the white away. What this does is reduce the actual pixels on the layer to nothing at all, while leaving the opacity of the layer effect at full strength. We could also reduce the opacity if we wanted to, and in fact it might look better if we did reduce the opacity a bit. And there we have our live image with the bricks shaded so it looks like it's painted directly on the wall. We could change the type. We can do anything we want to here. So I'll just show you that this type is selectable. Um, I'm not going to take the time to change it because we really don't have a lot of time. But there you go. I'll have to make a third tutorial to show how you can make this into shiny new paint with bevel and emboss. But for now, we're just going to leave it here. Next time, we'll see how to age the paint so it looks like it's been there for years. Until then, this is Robin Wood, and I hope you found this helpful.